You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. Uh, This week's episode is a little bit current. It's something that's currently going on or has gone on recently for me. So I thought I'd just, uh, you know, share it with you, share the love and all the rest of it. So before I get on to that and other updates, I would like to say this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, attachment, fatigue and more. Um, we associate burnout of work, but that's not the only cause. Any of our roles in life can lead us to feel burned out. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. I like that. Talking with someone else can help you figure out what's causing stress in your life. So BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, or even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anybody on camera if you don't want to. And because this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and uh yeah uh, you can go you get 10 percent off basically off your first month so you go to betterhelp.com slash anxiety podcast that is b-e-t-t-e-r-h-e-l-p.com slash anxiety podcast all right there we go thank you for the ongoing support and sponsorship um so this week i wanted to talk a little bit about something that happened to me recently which was which has happened in the past and uh i'm pretty sure it will happen again but each time it gets me it's sort of one of those tricky little things that plays on your mind and uh, everything's fine and you forget about it and then all of a sudden it comes back usually or often or actually always out of nowhere and you're like hang on a minute i haven't dealt with this for a while what's going on what i'm talking about is is really just being in a funk um it could be uh could last for a, a half a day it could last for a couple of days could last for you know uh, a week even but essentially being in a funk and i'll try to well how about this i'll define it for you in terms of what it means for me and uh perhaps it will resonate with you or, or you can say yeah i'll get that tim i've had similar dealings with uh the funk and so the other day I woke up in the morning, everything was seemingly fine, but um, for whatever reason, I just felt a bit off. Something felt a bit off. I didn't feel fully rested. Um, I didn't feel fully sort of confident in what I was going to do that day. I was, you know, I felt like a little bit down, a little bit deflated, a little bit depressed. Um, and it was just a normal day. It wasn't anything spectacular happening. It was a good old Tuesday or something. And I had to get, help get the kids ready and take them to school and all those sorts of things. But for whatever reason, just a funk. And it was probably, um, because I didn't sleep well or something I'd eaten or, uh, something I watched on TV the night before. I don't know exactly, but, uh, I do know how I felt and I tried to sort of, you know, honor that with tools that I've talked about many times on this podcast before um, and kind of put them into practice for myself. So the first thing I would say in terms of um, dealing with with a funk is that um, it's temporary, right? That is, I mean, like, you know, if you step back and look at sort of anxiety or depression as a whole, it's temporary. It only lasts for a certain amount of time. Um, that again, that could be differing amounts of time, depending on what's going on for you, but, um, it's over at some point. And often when it's over or, you know, almost all the time when it's over, I look back and I think, oh yeah, forgot about that. Yeah. That was interesting. I don't really remember it leaving me, but I do remember when it was with me and, uh, we, we sort of move on. I, th- I often think about like physical injuries to our body. You know, if you pull a muscle in your leg or hurt your shoulder or something, you give it a tremendous amount of attention when it's bothering you, if it wakes you up from a sleep or it causes you some aggro when you're moving around in the day or you're working out or something. You're like, oh, God, got this bloody knee problem. I can't get rid of it. But when it's gone, we don't sit there and think, oh, I'm so glad that knee problem's gone. I mean, you might do, 
I, I understand that. But most of the time we don't. We're just like, yeah, we're functional. We're moving. Life is good. The funk is the same. Same kind of stuff. It's like when it's when you're stuck in that sort of minor depression or minor sort of uh, brain fog or whatever it happens to be, however you want to define it. I don't know what the proper clinical definition is, but it doesn't really matter. It's just like you feel off. You don't feel right. You don't feel... You know, somebody's, if you had to do something where it re- required a lot of competence on that day, it probably wouldn't be the best day for you. Okay. And that's, I just want to share this with you because I, I've been at this for a long time, as you know, and uh, it still happens, still comes up. Sometimes I still think I'm having a panic attack and maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I don't know. I just kind of let it pass now. I'm kind of very at peace with it. Um, but in the case of this one, I just wanted to sort of share that experience with you and and talk about some of the ways that I work through it. Um, The first one, which I think uh, I've learned a lot about over the years is, I know when people talk about this, you're like, come on, it's not that bloody obvious, is hydration, right? I'm about to have a sip of a drink now. It's hydrating. So it's like, if you're dehydrated, then... um, it just puts you more likely to give you a headache. Uh, it's more likely to fe- make you feel low energy. If you mix that with not only being, and I've got vast experience with this, having fasted a lot in the past, done lots of fasting and done lots of ketogenic diet type low carb experiments. If your electrolytes are, s- are low, if your sodium is low, that can really throw you off big time. Electrolytes being um, sodium, potassium, and I don't know what the other one is. Probably important. <laughs> Um, but those being the main two. And, and I know for myself, if I feel a bit headachey or I start to get muscle cramps or something, if I sprinkle a bit of salt in my water or throw a bit of extra salt on my food, it normally brings me round, um, whether I'm doing ketogenic or not at the time. And I'm not currently, I haven't done it for a while. Um, so anyway, hydrate, drink water. If you normally wake up in the morning, go straight for a cup of tea or straight for a cup of, cup of coffee and you're in a funk, water first a pint of water get some water in you and make sure you tick that box to say right it's not that because it's sometimes we we bypass the most obvious things with self-care right so hydrate um keep going i, th- I think is, a, is an important one keep going like keep going through your day stuff you have planned don't pull the sheets over your head and say i'm just going to stay here because i think that i mean i I'm pretty sure that makes it worse and prolongs it and doesn't get you out of it quickly, quicker. Um, As I said, know that it's temporary. I think working out is very good. It changes your energetic state. It flushes your parasympathetic nervous system and uh, gives you some good endorphins. So work out to your, um, to whatever you feel like doing on, I mean, you might not feel like doing anything on that day actually, but I would say work out to the best of your ability. So if you normally work out really hard, then on that day, maybe you don't work out quite as hard, but you know, you still go to the gym or you still do your walk or you still do your run. You just run a bit slower or walk a bit slower or, you know, go to the gym and do the exercise machines that look easy or fun, but do something like get your heart rate elevated, break a sweat and, uh, tick that, you know, tick that box. So yeah, walk, run, whatever happens to be. I think, you know, a big thing for me in all of this is trusting the process, knowing again that it's temporary is just something to reinforce and knowing that if you do the self-care things, you're going to get through it much quicker. Focus on the self-care. If you go towards the dark side, go towards the bad stuff, try and drown it out with a bit of alcohol or try and drown it out with some, some fast food or a big bag of chips, big bag of crisps, as we would say in England. Um, or oh, jam and crumpets sounds lovely. <laughs> But if you start food trying to food it away, you're just going to feel bad afterwards because then you ate too much and now you're, you know, just going to make you feel worse. So I'll tell you, yeah, uh, you just got to avoid the bad stuff. It's not going to, particularly when you're in a funk, alcohol is going to make it worse. It might temporarily make you feel better, but it's going to make you feel worse the next day. It's going to prolong this whole thing. So don't do it. Dial it in. Avoid that. I'm not saying, you know, if you don't enjoy yourself ever. But now's not the time, okay? Talk to people you love. Another thing that I think is useful and interesting at these times is phone up your mum, phone up your dad, tell them you love them, right? 
The reason to do this is because it will likely be reciprocated from some of your friends or family. And they'll say, oh, Tim, thank you so much for calling me. I love you too. Sorry to hear you having a bad day. I don't mean, and I don't mean phone people and, and unload on them. No showing up and throwing up. I just mean, you know, connect with humans that you love and you know have unconditional love towards you and will give you some love back. And it's easy. And you just go first, right? You go first with, just want to tell you I love you. You know, feeling a bit off today, but just connecting. There you go. Simple as that. Um, I do think that, um, and I know, again, this is like hydrating. It's so obvious, but getting outside in nature helps a lot. I went for a walk with a good friend of mine on uh, Tuesday, I think it was, and we walked for a, we walked for an hour and a bit, hour and 15, I think, and uh, it just didn't seem like any time at all because we were just walking and chatting and sharing stories and problems and solutions and all this kind of stuff, and it was just a, a beautiful thing. Um, so if you can go with somebody else and just chat, not about your problems, not about your funk, but just get out there, get moving, or just go on your own and listen to the birds and listen to the the leaves and the trees and all that kind of stuff. Just reconnect, ground yourself. It's hard to, you know, um, feel worse when you're surrounded by nature. It feels better, trust me. Um, talking of things that are, that are difficult, I also appreciate in a big way that when you're in a funk, it's hard to ever think about feeling better again because it's it's kind of like, you know when you're hung over it's hard to f imagine what it feels like to not be hung over because you're in it now you're dealing with it now you've got the symptoms you've got the the feelings in your of, of nausea or whatever it is so it's the same kind of thing but you just have to trust that it's gonna you're gonna come out the other side and be like oh that was a non-event it wasn't particularly bad i do think in many times for me it's related to sleep sometimes it's not easy to you know um put a nail on it this, I might have thought my sleep was okay, but it wasn't, you know, those types of things. But um, but sometimes maybe it's something more obvious, like have a look at your day prior. Did you eat something that you don't normally eat? Did you spend time with somebody you don't like or doing something stressful or doing a having a difficult conversation or, you know, it could be something big, you know, like, oh yeah, quit my job yesterday or did something really difficult. Um, that might be why your your body and mind are processing this stuff that just happened to you. Um, but also flip side of that flip side of looking for the alignment, you don't have to know the answers to get better. You don't have to know what the issue is to move ahead. You just have to sort of trust the process and move ahead. Cause sometimes these things are hard to explain and we're not going to get an answer about how we feel the way we feel on occasion. It's just the way it goes. Right. Um, through all of the stuff that I do, I know, you know, consistently exercising, uh, and, and, eating well and drinking well is something that serves me very well in all, in all of these circumstances. And when I deviate from those too much, that's when it starts to, to sometimes go a little bit sideways. So those are the things that I think are really cool to focus on. Do the absolute best you can. As I, and as I said, do, do things that are easy for you without uh, stressing yourself too much. If you go, if you're already feeling in a funk and you go to the gym and throw a couple of plates on and start doing, you know, back squats or trying to do a max deadlift, I don't think that's going to help. I think it might be worse. Actually, you might be overloading your system with stress at that point. So we're really talking about just movement and getting that heart rate elevated a little bit and, and off you go from there. Um, I hope you found that useful. I just wanted to share that from a recent uh, in the last 10 days situation, you know, or a, or a funky day that I had. Um, I hope you haven't had one for a while. I'm sure I'll have it again. And next time I'll be like, oh, this is weird. What's going on? And then I can refer back to this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please go and leave a review um, with Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to this. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.